Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome back to this ongoing series of power moves where we're going to take a look at the step-by-step -step process of creating this 3D model of this horn. This might be something that you do to create a prop for a cosplay outfit or maybe you find some other applications where you could use this functionality but maybe use it on a project that you're working on. Now, in our last episode, what we talked about was how to get these 2D images into SolidWorks. Today, what we're gonna talk about is how to trace over the geometry from the horn and use that to create a projected curve. So we'll start out here by hiding our layout sketches. You can just you know, make it a little easier on yourself when there's less information shown. And then we're gonna go to the front plane and we're gonna begin a sketch on the front plane. And this sketch is going to be of a spline. Now, the whole trick to working with splines and being successful is less points is better. And we can illustrate that by creating a spline with a lot of points here. So we're gonna create a spline here that starts at the top. We're gonna go point, 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 and we're gonna end up down here at the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is grab some of these points and kind of drag them around to get the spline to sort of match with the geometry of the helm. Now, or of the horn, excuse me. Now, if we right mouse button on the spline, there's an option in the right mouse button command called show curvature combs. It's all the way down here at the bottom. And what we can see here is that when we have more points in our spline, these curvature combs tend to get really lumpy. They get, they get really problematic. This really isn't what you want. What you want from a spline when you're looking at these curvature combs is you want the, the curvature combs to be a nice smooth gradient. So you want it to kind of start up here at the top have that nice smooth gradient coming down and around and then going back the other way. When when there's a lot of inflection points, when these, when these curvature combs look lumpy, you're gonna end up seeing that, especially if the product is shiny and if it's under any kind of lights, you're really gonna see that kind of deviation in curvature. It's, it's not gonna be aesthetically pleasing. So instead of creating a lot of points like we did there, let's create a spline here that starts at the very tip of the horn and ends down here at the base of the horn and then we'll hit escape. And that's it, that's our spline, just a two point spline. Because what we're able to do when we're creating a spline is we're able to click on the spline itself. So we hit escape, click on the spline itself, and you get what are called spline handles. So you can see here that we can grab this spline handle, we can move it around. We can grab this spline handle here, we can move it around. And when we're moving that spline handle around, you can see that you're able to just kind of manipulate it into place so that it follows the curvature of that horn. Now, you might not be able to get it perfect with just two points. You might need to do a right mouse button and say insert spline point and maybe add one more point in here somewhere to kind of really get that to line up. But the, the, the point is that less spline points is better. You're going to get a much smoother transition. You're going to get a much more aesthetically pleasing result when you work with less spline points. So take some time, manipulate that spline until you feel like it's kind of going right down through the center of your, of your model. One little trick that you could do down here at the bottom of the model is you could create a center line like so, and then you could create another center line uh, coming off of the midpoint, and that should help you kind of figure out where the, the spline should originate. This should more or less be the middle. Again, you're working from an illustration or a photograph, so it might not be perfect, but it should get you pretty close. So now we've got that spline in place. Uh, now I think we are ready to uh, exit this sketch and we're gonna repeat that process. We will call this spline front view and we will repeat that process here on the right side view of this thing. So we come around to the right side view, we go right plane, begin a sketch and we're gonna once again create a spline that starts way up here at the tip and a spline which ends way down here at the base. Now, the trick to this spline or a little pro, pro tip with this spline here is if you rotate the view a little bit, maybe just two clicks of the left arrow on your keyboard, what you can do is you can pick this point, which is at the very bottom of the original spline, then hold control, then pick this point here, then let go of control and make those two points horizontal. And you can do the same thing up top here. Click this point, hold control, click this point, let go of control and make those two points horizontal. See, we're gonna be projecting these two curves into one another. So it's gonna be helpful, not required, but helpful if they are aligned at their start and at their end points. 
So just a little pro tip there. Let's get back to that side view and let's start uh, aligning this spline. Once again, we could use this little trick here. Uh, maybe, you know, find a reference point on the horn here, a corresponding reference point over here, and then grab the middle point here and create a project or a perpendicular line that should help you figure out approximately where this point should be. And then we can click on the spline itself, grab this handle here, drag this handle this way, grab this handle here, drag this handle this way, and continue manipulating the spline until it looks like it's kind of going up through the center of that horn. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just try your best, you know, take your time, try to get it pretty close. And of course you could always make adjustments on this later as well. I think that looks pretty darn good. I think that's gonna be recognizable if this is a cosplay prop. So now I'm going to exit that sketch as well, and we're going to rename that. We'll call that one spline. Uh, side view and now we are going to take those two splines and use the projected curve command to project them into one another leaving us with a 3d curve so here's the curve command you've got this option here for projected curve you notice i'm totally out of sketch mode i've exited all my sketches so we're going to say projected curve and this is going to be either sketch onto face or sketch onto sketch we're going to use the sketch onto sketch option we'll pick this curve here this curve here, those two splines, and we can already see in the preview, the result is gonna be a new 3D sketch. And that 3D sketch is gonna represent the centerline path for that horn. So we can hit the green check mark, and there we go. We've got our, I'm sorry, not a 3D sketch, a 3D curve. 3D sketch is a little, a little different. We're gonna talk about that in the next video. But there is our 3D curve. That 3D curve is projected from those two 2D sketches. And that's exactly what we did here in the final version of this horn. We took those two uh, 2D sketches, we projected them together, leaving us with our 3D curve, which is passing up right through the center of that horn. So I think that's where we're gonna stop today, but I hope that you found that useful. I hope you learned a little bit about how to work with splines in 2D. I hope you learned that having less points is actually better, and you learned how to use those spline manipulator handles. You also learned a little bit about how to use curvature combs. So if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, and of course, be sure to come back for the next episode of Power Moves.